So, uh, hi, I'm Yuvi. Uh, I sort of work for the Wikipedia mobile team. Uh, and this is going to be a very intro level talk on deferreds. How many of you have already used or heard of something called deferreds or promises as they are sometimes more popular? Okay, fair enough. So, if I, do, if I say something stupid, please call me on that. Yeah, so callbacks, asynchronous IO. Uh, that is like JavaScript both on the client side and on the server side. Uh, because we don't do threading, you know, or any network call or anything that might block network calls, file system access, accessing a database, uh, doing something with image data. Uh, we all use like asynchronous IO, which means that the actual code is implemented for you by the browser, and you just call it and pass it a callback that is called back whenever the operation is complete. So this is like a very simple callback that probably all of you are familiar with. It just does a jQuery get and when it succeeds uh, it will call like the success function and that will get printed so this is something that you know people who are just getting started will have a lot of problem with uh, because they don't particularly understand how closures are or how callbacks work and they would be confused as how they are actually two different things right i mean they're the reverse all when they execute versus when they are written uh, but if you understand how callbacks work and how uh, asynchronous IO is done, then they should be pretty self evident to you. Is there anyone here who doesn't understand why this is the way it is? Alright, all good. So, yeah, so callbacks are fine. Uh, we've been using them since we started using Ajax and everything is all okay. But they can be pretty messy. So, uh, assume for example that you want to do three asynchronous tasks together. Uh, a simple example would be you have a database, you want to run three queries to get three results and then do something with them, right? Or maybe you want to do three uh, get requests and do something with the results of all three. So this is how, like you would normally write it. You know, it's nested, right, inside each other. So th this is sort of like uh, the problem with lots of having lots of callbacks inside each other over and over again is that your code tends to take the shape of a you know pyramid that is on its side. It keeps going in and in and in. It keeps getting indented. It's called a staircase code. So this isn't that bad, but if you actually add, uh, like for example, proper error handling and everything to it, then it becomes like this, which is like nested like four levels and spread out over, like you know, all your error handling and stuff is spread out, right? Uh, you're not expected to be that. It just that show how bad it can be. So this might not look that bad to you if you are like used to dealing with like JavaScript from the days when you learned stuff by copy pasting it and then modifying things here and there instead of building reusable components. But once you start building those, then this kind of becomes a problem because you keep passing callbacks everywhere. Pretty much all your functions will have a signature of something, then success callback, and then failure callback. And if you want to like, you know, do uh, something where you have other functions, like uh, be able to add callbacks, like you have one network request, right? But you want uh, three different functions to be able to do three different things from it. You Your only choice is to go to the, the network requests Success callback and call these three functions manually instead of like having a way when the functions themselves can attach to that probably didn't make sense, but I think the diagram will probably make it clear. So that is callback hell, right? You essentially keep nesting callbacks in and in, and uh, that along with the fact that the, this keyword keeps jumping around, it is probably not uh, very easy to reason about. And the code also looks messy, which is probably the biggest problem. So deferreds are an abstraction over callbacks. Uh, they don't give you, they are not a language feature, at least in JavaScript, they don't give you anything extra. They are uh, a way to think about long running computations as objects that let you reason about and write code in a clearer way than just directly using callbacks and calling them from everywhere. <coughs> so a deferred is, it's an object, it's a JavaScript object that represents a long running operation like a network IO, file database access, whatever along with a set of handlers uh, that can be called when it completes successfully or it fails. So I'm going to be, there are a lot of implementations of deferreds and I'm going to be just talking about the jQuery one because that is like the most popular one. Uh, so, so you have, you attach handlers to the object which are called when it succeeds or fails. So you can do that with uh, dot done or dot fail on uh, in jQuery and uh, from the sender side you like for example uh, you use resolve to say it resolved successfully and dot reject to say it failed. 
so dot resolve and dot reject are your equivalent of you know calling the success callback from inside your function right so uh, this is like a typical like small little piece of code that would be that now it is written using callbacks so you are essentially getting uh, like requesting a url getting json data and you are accessing a field on it and if it is 42 you are calling the success function and if it is uh, not something else you are calling the failure function and this is how you would actually like write the caller for it you pass in a success function first and then a failure function first okay that is the syntax for us so this is how you write it deferred so first you create a deferred object okay that doesn't do anything uh, and then you do your normal uh, dollar dot get so all the jquery network functions they return a deferred so you can attach success and failure handlers to it like how i did like so you dot done function so that function will be called when your uh, network call succeeds right and you can also do dot fail uh, function that will be called when the network call fails uh, so this is so now you have an object that you can pass around that you can do whatever with right which, which has like lots of advantages so now you are returning the object so you create an object and inside it you are resolving it that is when it's a success and you are rejecting it when it's a failure and you're returning the promise of the deferred. So the different, the what the dot promise does is, it means you can't take the data you return and have someone else call reject or resolve on it. Like so, this is what you return, right? So if it is, if I don't call d dot promise, then the code here can call d dot resolve or d dot reject, and all the attached handlers would execute. That is not something you'd want. So if if you call dot promise, that means only the code that actually created the original deferred can either make it succeed or fail. So, so this, so this is essentially it. It is two lines longer than the uh, corresponding callback code, but it offers us a lot of uh, advantages. The primary thing is now we have an object that we can pass around uh, and have other people attach success and failure callbacks on. Uh, so the other, the fundamental difference between these two is like uh, when you just use callbacks that you know you pass to a function and uh, get back, it's a single receiver and a single sender. So you first call a function. You, you get in your success and failure callbacks, then the function starts some asynchronous operation, maybe a network call or something like that, and then the function returns. So the function you just call returns and your code goes on. After a while, the asynchronous operation completes. You do whatever computation you want in it, well, inside that, and then you fire your success or failure callbacks that the, that the user originally passed in based on something works or not. So this is one thing. So if you want to say, for example, fire two success callbacks or three, what you would have to do is you will have to daisy chain them. That is in the first success callback, you call the second success callback. The second one you call the third one, right? And it keeps going on. And you'll also have to do proper failure cascading. So if, if you are if you have success one, success two, success three, then you'll also have to have like an appropriate failure mechanism for each of them. And you'll have to manage them manually and make sure you call them all appropriate places. And this gets even harder when you want to have a reusable component. Like let's say for example, you have a network access component that must not like that must not know about your UI layer, right? Your UI layer should be able to attach to it whenever it wants. The network layer should not have you should not have to modify your network layer to call some UI function that updates something, right? So, so this is example code which just like says where the so first you call you, you first you call your function, then we call the asynchronous operation, and then the function returns, and then eventually the asynchronous operation completes. And uh, then we call our success callback. It's just a code snippet to show the previous timeline. And with deferred, you can have one sender and multiple sets of receivers at any point in time. Uh, so you first call the function. You are not passing anything. Your uh, function signature is clean. Uh, and then we start the asynchronous operation. And the function just returns a deferred, right? Uh, and then it goes on. And then other the the deferred that was returned, people can attach done and fail callbacks to it whenever they want and in whatever piece of code it doesn't matter uh, and then the asynchronous operation completes and we call resolve or reject right and then the appropriate handles are fired immediately so if it if you call resolve then all the done handles are fired sequentially uh, in the order in which they were attached and if it fails the fail handles are fired but you still have the object with you so you can you can uh, attach more callbacks with done or fail even after the request has completed and if the request is already completed, they'll be fired immediately, right? So this this like this works for anything that uses a deferred. It doesn't matter if it's a network I/O or something like that. So yeah, we have a function called get item 
that returns a deferred, which will revolve, eventually revolve, resolve to the item we got, might be from anywhere. Um, so we have d dot done. We are attaching a function to success, and then we are attaching a function to fail. So this is chain. Like if you use jQuery, one of the best parts about it is you can chain it. You can first like get like dollar uh, hash some ID, and then you can like add a class to it, set HTML, do everything in a single line with the to get it over and over again. So you can do the same thing with deferred. So you're first attaching a success function and then a failure function. You can keep attaching more. They can do it if you want. Uh, and then you can pass the object to other functions. So this is uh, the most powerful part of it because it's an object. You, you're, you can passing this to another function which attaches its own fail handler, which does something like say it shows up, like uh, it sends a network request saying this component failed at this point. You might want to log it somewhere or something like that. But you wouldn't have to. So this is a separate concern, reporting failures. You wouldn't have to. Like, uh, if this is your actual application code, you wouldn't have to pollute this with your uh, failure reporting code, right? It's separated. You just pass the function to it, and no matter what default it is, it can uh, uh, attach a fail to it and do whatever it wants. So that is the separation of concerns. You just have an object, you pass it around to wherever you want, and code can do whatever it wants with it. And, yes? Uh, going? Uh, Fail executes uh, when, say, say for example, if get item is a, that depends on get item. Whenever get item calls d dot reject, fail executes at that point. Right. So if that was a network call, it would call reject when maybe receiving validate data or something like that. So that depends on the function. It should be documented there. So it also makes it easier to build other abstractions on top of it. Uh, like the dollar dot when is probably the most useful and most used one, which is so. Imagine you have get item again, and you want to get three items and add them. So the first is callback code, which is like you know three nested three levels deep end, and that doesn't even have any error handling. Well, this is using dollar dot when. So get item this returns a deferred, this returns a deferred, that returns a deferred. So dollar dot when takes a list of deferreds, and it creates a new deferred, which resolves when all the all these deferreds resolve, or it fails when even a single one of them fails. Right, so this is this this dumb that you attach will be called when all three of them succeed, okay? And you will get as parameters uh, whatever parameters that they pass to their d dot their their resolve function in the same order, right? So you can do this very simply, and you can also attach a dot fail for it, and it will fail when any one of these requests fail because obviously you can't do a plus b plus c if you don't have a, b, and c, right? And you can also nest these, so you can say first I want to get a and b. And then, like you know, I'll have another call with dot when where I add that to C. So when A and B, when A and B succeed, I want to execute this. When A, B, and C have succeeded, I want to execute this. So you can have multiple hierarchies of whens that execute things based on when calls complete. So this is very useful when you are writing like fully dynamic applications that fire off a lot of network requests. And whenever something comes back, you have to execute something. And then you have some displays that are uh, dependent on two or three network calls executing correctly. And some that are de de dependent on different like sets of network calls. So dollar dot is very useful in such a case. And that's it actually. So so J jQuery deferred is like uh, very well documented and it is used throughout jQuery. Uh, if you are using any of the Ajax dot get something like that, you are already getting a deferred back, and you can like pass it around, do stuff with it. And Common has uh, that is like uh, it has a bunch of proposals on how to use the canonical. Uh, what should be the canonical implementation of deferreds when you're using Node.js? And there are a bunch of implementations there as well. You can check out if you are using Node.js. So deferreds are very, very useful in Node.js as well because there everything you do is an asynchronous thing which refer, which returns some, which takes some sort of a callback. So it's very easy to find yourself like six six functions deep when you are actually writing your application code and you are unsure when your closing brace closes which thing and what this exactly means at that particular point of time. So questions? No, it's it's exactly the same as how you would uh, debug a callback. If you're using Chrome or Firebug, Firebug, you can put breakpoints in it, and it is actually easier to debug because, uh, for example, you can do something like uh, you. It's an object, right? You have something called D, which is a deferred object, and you can attach done and fail handlers to it from the console itself. So you can put a breakpoint there, and you can say D dot function something and write your own debug code, and that will execute live. You can't do that with you know uh, with callbacks unless you want to go back and edit the source. Does it make sense, or do you want me to show it? Huh. 
Ya. Hmm. Yeah. So, so that is a implementation issue with the async libraries that are around, which should uh, I haven't actually used it in Node.js, which is why all my examples are jQuery. But uh, I'm guessing it should not be uh, worse than how it were when you have like proper callbacks, like just regular callbacks. And if it is, then it should uh, actually be resolved at the library level rather than as a concept itself. So when you see a state trace, right? mm -hmm. so uh, it's like a, instead of telling you the line number or something in your code, it will tell you like it gets something in async that's like It becomes really difficult if you're writing a more base code. I, again, so that is a problem with the library's implementation. Right? It so should. Is there any difference in async at the common JS promises? Like it get, is it more debuggy than that? Uh, so common JS promises, there is no standardized one yet. Uh, from what I know from the wiki, there are a bunch of competing proposals and competing implementations. And if you if you could probably try out all of them, then at least I'm guessing a bunch of them would make it easier to debug. There is no one implementation, like how jQuery already has one. There's no one thing for Node.js or uh, from the common JS platform. Thanks. Uh, I have a question here. So, uh, can I use it? Can I just have deferred without jQuery at all? Yes, yes. There are. Uh, there is, as you said, there's an async library that gives you deferreds without jQuery. Uh, there are like it's also easy. You can spend about six hours and write your own deferred. Only for Node or like? No, uh, the, all the examples I gave were for jQuery, so it's used anywhere you want. It, it works in browser. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, I, I have a question. So, when an example you show. They're not strictly equivalent, right? Come uh, The one example, mm -hmm. the deferred version is not strictly equivalent to the other version. These calls get launched simultaneously. It's not dependent on the result of the get item A yes. and get item B and get item Yes, B. which is what you want, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, they're not exactly equivalent, but uh, you get the exact result you want, and I think no. this is preferred behavior. Yeah, no, I, I want to be clear about the behavior. Yes, 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 they're not, they're not exactly equivalent. No. Because that is, so in that, uh, B is dependent on A, which is dependent on C. Mm -hmm. Like here, they are launched together. And so is there a way of achieving something like that? Uh, you, is there a construct? Uh, not with this. You would just keep attaching done handlers like that. Uh, actually, there is another one. There's dollar dot pipe, okay. which does the, like, which makes it linearly dependent for you. Okay. It has the same syntax. Okay. But you do dollar dot pipe and it like one after the other, okay. and you can also, and you can also specify I think uh, if you want to do any filtering on top of one of the other or something. Okay. And does this also make uh, unit testing my code easier? I personally think it does like because you can, I can create a mock. Before yeah, exactly. You can create a mock deferred that instead of doing a network request does something else, right? Uh, and gets the data. So I think I personally think that's easier, but I don't know if it's that much of a difference versus using raw callbacks.